I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home here in Hanoi, Vietnam. And today I'm going to talk about how to make money. That's why I wore my cashmere sweater. No, kidding. But today I'm going to talk about how to make money in your photography. To be fair, what works for me might not work for you, but I do have some general principles, some general advice that is applicable to anyone out there that wants to make money in their photography. So let's get into it. Let's talk money and let's talk photography. So as always guys, don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com where I've got presets, I've got prints for sale, I've also got a variety of one-on-one -on -one classes for anyone out there, open to all genres, all levels of photographers, anyone that wants to learn, get better in their photography, and learn from me. You can check all that out again at justinmott.com. So like I mentioned, what works for me isn't necessarily gonna work for you. There's so many factors out there. You know, what genre, what market, what age group you're in, what style of photography you're in, what era you made money in your photography. There's so many different factors. Everyone is so different. Everyone's so unique in where they live, what they shoot, and how they shoot, and so many variables. So I don't have like a general blueprint. This is really for amateurs, pros, anyone out there that just wants to make money in their photography. So I'm going to dive right in. The first thing I'm going to talk about is trust. Don't just trust anyone. Don't trust me here on YouTube. Don't trust anyone on YouTube. Don't trust anyone on the street. Just stop trusting anyone. I don't mean don't trust in general, but don't trust without doing your homework. You know, before you listen to me, before you trust me, go to my website, look at my work. Look at justinmott.com, that's my editorial work. Look at mottvisuals.com, that's my commercial work. That's where I make most of my money. I'd love to say I make most of my money from my other work, my passion work, my documentary work, my wildlife photojournalism work, but I don't, I'm gonna be straight with you guys. But even that, don't trust me. Go look at the work, go check out the websites, go look at my clients. Even that, a lot of times people on their website with their clients, they haven't necessarily worked for those clients. So I would do a deep dive before you trust anyone out there because there's so much information on YouTube. There's so many photographers who look like they've made it in the photography field. A lot of the big names actually don't make their money off of photography. And that's fine. That's fine for them. But should you be listening to their advice about how to make money in photography? If that's not how they made their money, if they made their money from YouTube, a lot of them got into doing YouTube because they weren't making money in their photography. And I'm not saying all of those YouTube photographers are useless, and I'm not saying they're not successful in their own right, but most of them, most of them are successful on YouTube. They weren't successful making money from their photography. I hope that makes sense. Some have, most haven't. I've done the research. I've looked at a lot of these photographers. I've looked at their client list. Most of them haven't. So if you want to be successful at YouTube, maybe follow their model. But a lot of them aren't pushing that model out there. They're pushing out their model about photography. And again, you know, some of them do great reviews and things like that, and you can learn things from them, but I'm just talking about when it comes to making money, where photography is your main business, like you're getting paid to take pictures, most of them haven't done it. That also goes for things like textbooks and workshops, and a lot of these websites that offer advice about photography. Look into who's saying what and look at the background. Don't always trust that background's actually gonna work for you as well, too. I mean, there's a lot of photojournalists out there that were successful in like the 90s, and now they do workshops and things like that. And what worked for them, being a staff photographer or just being a freelance photographer in that era, might not be the same for now. Same goes for commercial photography as well. There's certain types of you know, photography now that shifted more towards computer generated graphics and things like that, that maybe these people are teaching like those techniques, but, but the business side or the business model, that old business model, isn't necessarily working today. So, so do your homework. And you might say like, wait a minute, stop. Don't you have a YouTube channel? Isn't that what you're doing right now? Don't you teach workshops? Don't you do online classes and things like that? Yeah, I do, but I'm remodeling my apartment and that is actually really expensive. No, I do, but that's actually not where I make the majority of my money. It's actually only where I make a small part of my money. But I do this as part of a long-term plan, which I'll talk about later, and having your goals as a photographer and how those goals are important in guiding you to make money throughout your entire career. But I do this here to set myself up for later on in life. Building an audience now, building an educational program now, so that later on, if I want the freedom or if my priorities change, or if just the industries change, I'm set up fine, or at least I have an insurance policy. And I also like doing this. I like teaching, I like giving back, I like talking about photography. It's something I genuinely enjoy doing. But again, it's a very, very small portion of my income right now. But later on, maybe it'll be something bigger, but at least it's there and I'm building the foundation right now. The next piece of advice I have for you guys out there is to 
treat yourself like a business. I know for those of you that have watched my channel for a long time, you say, I know I've heard you say it before, but remember it. And some of you are new out there, so remember that. Stop thinking of yourself as just a freelancer. Think of yourself as a business. And what does that mean? Well, a lot of freelancers just think like they're gonna put their name out there once or twice or do a little work and then the work's just gonna come pouring in. They don't think about long-term, they don't think about their branding, they don't think about their marketing, their accounting their business plan, their goals, things like that. They don't work in their off time as much as they should. Right in the beginning is going to be the hardest part. When you launch yourself or when you when you announce that you are a photographer and this is your business, right then start treating yourself like a business. Own it. Talk about yourself as having my own photography business. When you can afford employees that can fill the slots that you don't want to do anymore, when it's economical for you to do and you can fit it within your budget, go for it. But for now, you have to handle all those things. I like to use this comparison with chefs because I've watched a lot of like food shows and things like that. Uh, just think about like what those chefs have to go through. If you have any friends or a chef, think about when they open their first restaurant. Maybe they had a job working for someone else and they clocked in and clocked out. But when they open their first restaurant, which is what you're doing when you are a freelancer, when you start your photography business, you're opening up your business. Talk to them. Ask them how much time they put into it. They're there. They're not just there going in, clocking in, clocking out, and just cooking during their hours of operation. They're working on stuff afterwards. They're working on the brand. They're involved in every aspect of the company. And they're putting in crazy hours. And that might not sound appealing to a lot of you out there. And that's okay, but don't expect your business to be successful if you're not willing to put the time in. Not just in taking pictures, the cooking, but also in the marketing, in the planning, in getting better. You know, a lot of chefs are out there. They're, they're going out there. They're experiencing other cuisines. They're practicing different things. They're going online and they're learning. That's what you should be doing as well. So treat yourself like a business. Don't just think of yourself like you're going to shoot and the job's going to pour in and that's going to be it. It's not, especially in the beginning. You're going to have to lay that foundation. You're going to have to put the work in. Hey guys, just want to take a moment to let you guys know, don't forget to join my channel if you're interested. I do have exclusive content for people that are members of my channel. It costs $4.99 a month. You just have to hit the join button and it comes with a lot of bonus content, early releases of my videos, special deals for members and also priority for your questions in the comment section. So if you have a question, I answer members first. You get a little avatar and I look for the avatar and answer those questions first always in the comment section and I also come to you guys for feedback about episodes and, and ideas for episodes and it's a much tighter knit community you also get exclusive access to our Facebook group as well so if you're interested in that you can join for four dollars and nine cents a month by hitting the join button it helps me helps the channel out, and it helps me create more content like this for you guys the next piece of advice is way easier said than done and that is to land a mega client now it can take many years to do that. And for some people, they might not ever get it. But always have that, not in the back of your mind, have it in the front of your mind. Think about that big client that you could get, that you could turn into a pipeline of work. And now, that is different for every different genre. For me, when I first started in the editorial world, that was the New York Times. It gave me a pipeline of work to help me sustain a living here in Vietnam, but they still don't pay well. And then when I started doing commercial work, I was looking for that home run client. Again, not just for that consistent work, but that client that you can also leverage that brand name because you've done the work. Don't make it up, don't exaggerate, but once you've put the time in and they are a client of yours, then you can leverage that work into more work from other big names. So for me in the commercial work, the big client was IHG, which is Intercontinental Hotels. And the first job I did for them, I nailed it. And that grew into doing video work for them. And that grew into being one of very few official vendors for them. So those opportunities aren't just gonna pop up right away, right in the beginning, but when that opportunity arises, like grab a hold of it and never ever let go. I mean, it took a lot of work. I mean, I went the extra mile. I flew to Bangkok just to reinforce my name, to remind these people at the corporate level, that's where the corporate office was. I would fly there, I'd fly to Singapore, just for the only reason to meet up with them. Even if I didn't have a scheduled meeting, I'd hang out where they hung out. That might sound a little bit weird, but they actually hung out at Intercontinental Bar which was close to where I was staying anyways, but you know, I'd make appointments with them and I'd, and I'd hang out with them and I'd meet them professionally and socially. I just kept driving home what we do, why we do it, and I believed in it too. I mean, it wasn't just like bullshit. I was like, actually, okay, I think we're really good at this. I think we can do more work. And I had ideas and I presented them with ideas. And I reinvested in myself and I bet on myself as well. So. I went to a GM conference that they actually had, they invited me to talk to, and we printed up these books, and it was expensive. It was like a couple thousand dollars to make these books up with a handwritten note for all of the GMs, and had all of our work, all of what we do, an introduction to our team, our style, and all the different work that we've done for all the different intercontinental properties, and that made an impact, and that landed more work later on. So that home run client isn't gonna come easy, and it's different for different industries. Obviously in hotels, a big hotel chain, editorial work, yeah, big magazine. In the wedding world, it could be that like wedding planner that knows everyone. Whatever that opportunity is, don't just go the extra mile, go the extra 10 miles. And then once you get that client, hang on for dear life and protect it. I don't mean like be manipulative or be deceptive or anything like that, but 
be aware. You know, do you research? Are other people shooting for them? If so, do they do a better job? And if so, how? How do they do a better job? How do they get that work? They, did they beat you on price? Did they beat you on style? Did they beat you on everything? Be aware, be conscious, stay on top of things, and then, yeah, hold on for dear life once you have that client and do everything you can to make sure you keep getting that work because those people are going to change at that company and you're going to have to do what it takes to keep your name relevant and to keep that work because, again, other people are going to be gunning for it. The next piece of advice I'm going to give you is to value your time and just value your work in general. That, and that doesn't just apply to people that are undervaluing themselves. Of course, I believe in all of you out there, value your time, value your money, but know your value as well. I think just as many people are guilty of overvaluing their work and their time. Uh, because different markets, different markets, different approaches. When I first moved to Vietnam, I wanted to charge ten to fifteen thousand dollars for a wedding. I couldn't. People thought I was crazy. I wasn't getting work. Could have been stubborn and stayed with that and not work. Instead, I started to take a bulk approach and started charging a lot less than that, a fraction of that, maybe like two thousand dollars for a wedding. I actually started even lower than that. And then I sort of worked my way up. But I had a lot of friends who moved down here from other places where they charged a lot, or they got that one time that commercial job where they got paid like how you think you should be paid, and it was by a big client with deep pockets, and they paid a lot for your assistant, they paid a lot for you, they paid a lot for your lighting, all that, and then after that, they just think like, okay, that's my new price, but if that is, and that works for you, and you keep getting work, go for it, but if it doesn't, you have to adjust. You have to adjust to the market, you have to adjust to the time, the area you're working in, the genre, your competition, all that. You have to factor all that in, so don't don't undervalue yourself and give your work away for free. There are times where barter makes sense. There are times where reduction rate makes sense. Fine. Be careful because once you give away your work for free, it's hard for people to see value when you want to charge the right amount for it or what you think is the right amount for it. But also be careful about overvaluing yourself. If you're not getting work ever, if you're just not landing the job, being bitter, being angry, and going online and typing about it and talking to friends and complaining about it all the time. I see it. I see friends that do this all the time. They don't work much. So you have to adjust. So don't overvalue and don't undervalue your work. Understand the value of your work within the market that you're in, which relates to your location, relates to the genre, and relates to the quality of work that you're putting out. The next piece of advice I'm going to give you is to have a goal. So you should have a short-term goal in mind, what the next five years look like, but you should have a long-term goal as well. What do the next 10 to 15 to 20 years look like? Do you want to always shoot everything yourself? If you're a wedding photographer, if you want to shoot by yourself, can you handle that? Are you at an age right now where you have the energy to do that, but in 10 years, in 15 years, Will you have the energy to shoot a wedding or two weddings a week? Or do you want to build a business where you have other shooters that work under your brand, that you've trained, that you trust, and they could deliver what you want them to deliver creatively? Is that your long-term plan? Maybe it's not, but have a plan in mind. For me, in my commercial photography business, I knew when I started I wanted to do photography and just shoot hotel photography, but I also knew I wanted to grow into something more. I wanted to build a business. I wanted to build something where people can go on shoots for me, people that I trust, people that I've trained. Again, all this stuff takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of patience and a lot of work, but I've had people that worked for me for years as an assistant that I can trust now to go on shoots without me. My wife produces all of our shoots, but we've got to the point now where we can be at home. We still oversee and still understand what's happening, but our teams can go on shoots and we can make money off of that. That's our long-term plan. My other long-term plan is this, my YouTube channel. So this is sort of my other little passion project, but it's also something I have a plan for. I want to grow this into an educational system where I have my YouTube channel, I have my online classes, I have my workshop, I give lectures and things like that, and all related to photography, education, helping you guys improve. So that's even, again, even on my side hustle, my side business, I have a short-term plan, I have a long-term plan. And just... Be ready for it to take time. And also, while I add on there a little sub-tip in there, is be ready to pivot. You know, industries change. When I first started, I did have the long-term plan to, to have other commercial photographers work for me, but I didn't really think about video so much. And then I pivoted towards, okay, video production is actually a big part of what we do, and I can sell that on top of the photography. And now it kind of works the other way. Now people come to us mainly for video, and we sell them on photography. So we started with commercial photography, and then grew into video production, then grew into like full production. We hire the models, we do all the casting, we do all the props, we hire the stylist, we do all that stuff. So it sort of grew, and that's because I was open to pivoting. The next piece of advice I'm gonna give you is to be versatile. Again, that's easier said than done, and I know there are exceptions out there. There's some people that just shoot fashion, just shoot hotels, just shoot weddings. I get that, and that's fine. And it's great that they have focus, but I've seen so many different industries. I've seen so many different genres of photography. The business side of those genres change rapidly. I knew a photographer who was quite successful in Los Angeles doing car photography in the studio, and then that industry changed to CGI more, so he was out of work. I mean, he went from super successful, big studio, had to pivot his entire business plan. Actually, 
went into something completely different outside of photography because it wasn't so versatile. The same thing goes for any genre. For us, even hotel photography, maybe that will change. Maybe AI will change that. Maybe people won't want room shots anymore. Maybe they won't even want lifestyle shots by a photographer. Maybe they'll just let AI do it. So again, being versatile, having my photography educational stuff, but also even within my Mott Visuals business, also doing industrial work, corporate work, even real estate development videos and photography and things like that. We're extremely versatile. So if one industry takes a hit, or the industry changes entirely, or the value of the industry changes entirely. It's not great, but we're not caught with our pants down. You know, and I also do my wildlife journalism stuff, and I also do my editorial and travel photography stuff as well, even though that doesn't pay as well. But again, being versatile throughout my entire career has kept me busy, has kept me earning money as a photographer. And the last piece of advice, and probably the best piece of advice I'm gonna give you throughout this entire episode is to be exceptional. That is so much easier said than done, but I promise you, good photographers don't even make average money. Actually, a lot of great photographers don't make average money. To make average money or good money, you need to be exceptional. That's just the way it is. This market in all of photography genres is quite saturated. So you need to be exceptional, not just in your style, but also in your branding, in your personality, in your charisma, everything you deliver, everything you package up within that business has to be exceptional. You need to start to work on these things from day one when you launch your business. So stop looking at people that are pretty good and comparing yourself to them. Stop looking at people that are even great. Look at the best. Whatever industry or industries you wanna go into with your photography, like I said, to be versatile. If you're gonna go into multiple genres, don't just be pretty good at one and okay at the other one and maybe like, a little bit better than everyone else, the other one. No, be exceptional at every single discipline. So stop looking at the good, stop looking at the above average, look at the exceptional, compare yourself to exceptional, the style, the website, the branding, everything that they deliver, look at that and aim to be better than them. That's it, that's your goal. Okay, that's it for today, guys. Don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com. Appreciate you guys watching this episode. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments section. I hope this was helpful. I hope I can help you guys make more money in your photography. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to have a wonderful day.